Hi, I'm Joe. Thank you for watching this video. This video is from a series we're calling Stories from the Mouth of the Columbia River. We hope you enjoy this video and will like and subscribe. The boat that sank, the Cameron, was an American submarine that caught in. And the skipper went to a meeting up in Washington, you know, he said, the, the government told him, literally told him, when we're dragging a net across the bottom, it creates a big cloud of silt, okay? And they can get right behind that net. And that plane flying overboard, pulling that sonar tube or radar tube, whatever it is, you know, they were flying back and forth, pulling, and that's what that thing is looking for. It. You know, they're doing war games. It was just Americans doing war games, and that submarine was right behind our net in that cloud of silt hiding in that cloud of silt. Couldn't see it, huh? Until we stopped to pull our nets up. Oh, I didn't know we stopped. <laughs> Caught the net, took us right over. We thought we were hung up on the bottom. And all of a sudden, the boat started doing this, and we were, we were winding up, because Nick called out the wheelhouse. We're hung up, we're hung up. Ran out there, started the winches, and all of a sudden, my side, we're going down, he goes, I forget what he said. He said, get that winch running or something like that. And so I said, it's on, it's full speed. And it just kept between the winch pulling the cable and that submarine pulling, <laughs> pulling that were, rail. You were going over fast. There. Going over fast. And because he told me to keep winding on it, would have thought second, my, my afterthoughts now would have been just open that valve up and let that cable go. Yeah. Let it go. That that rail went in the water, and that was it. Once that wow. rail went in the water, it was like, then the top of the wheelhouse came down, hit me on the top of the head. Oh, my goodness. And you're in the water by I, now? I'm underwater now. I'm underwater with this Tennessee and stars going, what the hell was that, you know? Yeah. Come up, coach, <coughs> completely capsized wow. now, floating upside down on the water. The other crew member, all of a sudden, he's right there. Because he just... And went, you had time went, to put your wet or your... Uh... No, no, we were all on deck just pulling up. He actually, his side, because his side didn't go in the water, he goes, I just climbed up over the rail and right up on the bottom of the boat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he didn't get wet until he slipped <laughs> off. You know? uh, so I said, okay. And I'm screaming, I'm, I'm yelling, Nick, because I figured maybe he's over on the other side of the boat. Because he was in the wheelhouse. I figured, well, maybe he's on the other, I'm yelling for him. Like, don't get no answer, don't get no answer. Now, the, the other deckhand, he's swimming away. I go, where are you going? Oh, this boat's going to go down, it's going to take us with us. No, 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 you need to stay here. This is where they're going to find us. I get, Bruce, you have to stay right here. This is where they're going to find us. As long as, this is our debris field. This is where they're going to find us. And he goes, what are you doing? We had a buoy, some buoy, you know, those buoy bags that used for bumpers and for, like, crab pots. Hang on to this. Stay at the rail here, stay at the boat, hang on to this. He goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm going down. I'm going to get, I'm going to get the skipper out of this boat. He goes, you what? He's, he thinks I'm crazy. I'm going <laughs> to swim down, go back into the boat, and get, get Nick out. And just as I was taking, you know, doing the hyperventing, getting a lot of oxygen in my bloodstream because I knew I was going to have a swim to go through, Nick popped up. Just as I was getting ready to dive down, <clears throat> Nick popped up. Uh, well, a few feet from us. Wow. Another boat came over and picked us up, but that was an American camera. Hmm. Was that still attached then? After I don't you know. Got after it capsized, was that the end of it? I, that was in it. Somehow it came loose. Okay. It had come loose after we capsized. Uh, the boat floated upside down out there for like three days. Oh, wow. Because <laughs> it trapped so much There's air. There's a big in air bubble in, yeah. the, in the hull. And the Coast Guard calls the, the boat owner and goes, you need to go out there and put a light on that because it's a, it's a navigational hazard. <laughs> he, he goes, goes serious? Goes, Isn't that your job? <laughs> you know, once again. That's bizarre. They, once again, they ain't willing to go do that. And, and he, he, he actually worked for the salvage chief. The, the big salvage operation here in Astoria a long time ago. He said if he thought that that boat was going to float for that many days, he would have went out and tried to salvage it. Mm. Yeah, very seldom 
they don't normally stay up that long. Gotcha. It goes over and it goes down. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's the, the that's why the other kid was trying to throw him away. He thought the boat was going <laughs> to suck us down. Said, well, that doesn't really happen either. You know, but you need to stay right here. <laughs> you ain't going How many nowhere. crew were on that? Just me and him and the skipper, three guys, hmm. two oh. deckhands and the skipper. And how big a boat was that one? That was a uh, 60-some for uh, <laughs> In fact, the, right let, let, me, let me tell you the, the other strange thing about that sinking. That same day, as we were working out on deck, picking shrimp and doing stuff, and we were talking about, and he, somehow the subject come up of, you know, whoever died on a, you know, if the boat ever sank, would you continue fishing, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> That was our conversation <laughs> that day while we were working on the deck fishing or the day before. Yeah, what would you do? Would you still fish if you were on a boat that sank? Blah, blah. Yeah, I don't know, depending on the circumstances, you know. What are the circumstances? He never fished again in his life. Oh, wow. That was it. He, and he, he goes, you're going to continue fishing? I said, those are strange circumstances. <laughs> Submarines, you know, what are the odds? Well, for me, that was my second time. <laughs> now, we're not even through with these submarine stories because now we're out there on another boat and see the plane flying over, pulling the tube, and I'm going, oh, this isn't good. <laughs> Seen this before. <laughs> Gifford comes out of the wheel, I just, we got to pull our nets up right now. The Navy just called and said, we got a submarine right underneath of us. Uh, but they said, you need to, if you got your nets on the bottom, you need to get your nets up right now. So we reel up our nets, and about three minutes later or less, it seemed the water turned blue right behind the boat, and the submarine. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so uh, my submarine's experiences are. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. We hope that it was uh, interesting to you, and if it sparked in any way thoughts you may have about stories from your family or friends or anyone, we'd love for you to make connection with us. Go to our website at tamingthemouth.com and click on the contact button, and we look forward to hearing from you.